So that's what I'm not really digging, and nothing King of Black is really going on in this run. And how? Nick Spencer is Donny Kate's boy. What's going on, Gem and Knights? Gem Mint here. It's Wednesday, January 13th, and we're doing the new comic book day reviews. What a huge week for new comics. We're going to go at this thing spoiler-free, as we always do. Before we jump into it, make sure to hit that subscribe. You know we're on the road to 110,000 subscribers, and we're giving away this Batman Killing Joke CGC 9.8 once we hit the milestone. Stay tuned until the end of the video for my pick of the week and what you got to do to enter the giveaway. Let's start off looking at the DC books, and man, Future State has actually been pretty good. We're going to start here with Dark Detective Issue 1. This is by Tamaki, Rosenberg, Mora. Then you have the backup story by D. Giomencio, Belair, and Fabuela. So uh, you have Dark Detective, which is the Bruce Wayne story. This seems to be the same universe where the next Batman's taking place and Robin Eternal, which we'll talk about. I'm really digging this kind of futuristic neon version of Gotham, kind of like that dystopian future, futuristic, but still everything is kind of crappy. Uh, anyway, we kind of figure out what happens to Bruce Wayne because we don't really know what happened to him by reading the next Batman. Then there's rumors of him being dead. So that's what this book explains. It's got great artwork. And the backup story was a Grifter story, which was actually pretty dope. You remember Grifter from Image, and then he came over to uh, DC, was Jim Lee's character. The Grifter story was cool as well. So, so far, so good for Future State. Then let's jump into Robin Eternal. So this is uh, Fitz Martin, Barros, Ferreira, and Lucas. So this is following Tim Drake, and it's in that same world as Dark Detective. And kind of like the name suggests, we have a death here, some Lazarus pits, some futuristic Lazarus chips uh, to bring this person back to life. But uh, kind of all tying in with those uh, other Batman titles that I mentioned, the same type of great artwork, the same futuristic Gotham. I'm digging it. All right, then we got to talk about Teen Titans, which seems to be in a different area or different multiverse here. Uh, this is by Sheridan, Sandoval, Tara, Ghana, and Sanchez. So this was uh, the Red X tease that everybody was really into when DC first showed the future state roster or lineup. Everybody was pretty much ragging on it except for Red X. Well, that's this issue. And I didn't really mention it on the other books, but these future state books are spawned out of the death metal miniseries right so death metal led into these multiverses and basically undid crisis on infinite earths if you really want to think about it so this book was dope man you have the red x character you have the robin kind of nightwing adopting the deathstroke moniker i didn't really grow up reading teen titans i was never a teen titans guy but i really liked the interaction between dick grayson and starfire i think it was another strong issue from future state all right, then we have Justice League. This is like another double issue here. So this is by Joshua Williamson, Roca, Takara, Henriquez, Ferrado Jr., and Mayolo. So this is um, kind of a new Justice League, right? You have Jonathan Kent. You have Yara as Wonder Woman. It's a whole new squad, and they're trying to run Justice League in a different manner than the original League because it always seems to fail, right? So they don't even know each other's secret identities, seemingly. They're not supposed to hang out outside of missions and there's this kind of like doppelganger villain a justice league doppelganger villain going on here so pretty interesting story good artwork i'm really digging this yara wonder woman and the backup story here was a justice league dark was this not by rom v yeah did i say v rom v uh on the justice league dark and it's kind of what you would expect from a justice league dark uh, story you have uh detective chimp you get some john constantine zatanna and just uh, kind of where the Justice League is in one of these multiversal futures. So it was, a, it was an okay story. It was a little dense. I didn't like it as much as I liked Rom V's Swamp Thing. But I liked the ending. And it, it was a lot of material for this little uh, double-sized issue. All right, guys. Now the not-so-good news. This Green Lantern was not good, man. This is a uh, another double-sized issue. Actually, kind of triple. You have Thorn, Katie, Altbaker, Rainey, Basiri, Henry... Atea, Hi-Fi, and Mayalo. So you have a Jon Stewart story that doesn't feel like a Jon Stewart story. He looks more like Bishop with a lightsaber. Like, what is this? There was like nothing to do with Green Lanterns in the Jon Stewart story. The artwork, I mean, look, art is um, subjective and not that it was bad. I just didn't like it. It felt like I was reading that Warhammer 40k Marvel series or like Avengers of the Wasteland. It's, it might be the same artist. Wasn't digging it. Then you had a backup story with Jessica Cruz, which was actually pretty dope. Her kind of like alien style hunting these two Yellow Lantern uh, core members. 
And that was pretty cool. And then a, a third Guy Gardner story, which was only a few pages. But basically, Guy Gardner, uh, who gets stuck on a planet, the ring goes out, and he's living there for, like, years and years and years, kind of running this civilization that has to be led by a prophet, kind of making the peace there and lying to them in order to do so. So actually, you know what? The, the two backup stories were not bad, but that main John Stewart story, I'm sorry. That was the pick of the week. All right, so then we're going to go to Superman and Wonder Woman. This is by Waters, Del Dusa, and Filardi. Telling you, I'm digging this Yara Wonder Woman. John Kent, not so much. He was a little bit of a Boy Scout in the beginning, which is to be expected by Superman. Kind of his morning routine and how long it takes him to do things. And every morning he wakes up and says, Good morning, Metropolis in the sky with his eye beam lasers. All the stories with Yara so far kind of involve gods. So this one has like the sun god, the moon god. And then you have Solaris, which is like a Superman villain who's like a big living sun. So you have this showdown with the sun god uh solaris it was a good issue man uh, good artwork uh interesting story and i kind of did end up liking superman a little bit more as the issue progressed but in the in the beginning i was like come on man and lastly we have kara zor l supergirl this one's by bennett and savage so this was one that i i almost didn't pick up because the art style just didn't look like it was gonna be for me but you know what i gave it a shot anyway I, I figured most of these future state titles have been good and this one was okay i mean it was definitely more lighthearted. you have a supergirl led storyline and this spaceship crashes through this kind of like sealed moon that she's living on in the future and all civilization is living on the moon and it's kind of like similar to her crash landing or clark's crash landing as superman and uh, it's this other creature kind of like this ghostly type of creature that can turn into a wolf and absorb your powers and everything uh there's kind of like a gem cameo in here which i thought was pretty cool so uh, it ended up being an okay it's not going to be my favorite issue but it was better than the Jon Stewart story. Before we move on to these Marvel books, we got to give a shout out to Street Level Hero. My boys at SLHLA.com, they dropped their exclusive variant for Star Wars The High Republic Issue 2, which is available now. And tomorrow they're releasing their Venom 33 exclusive, which is the amazing Spider-Man 316 cover homage of Null vs. Venom. This is going to drop tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Use the code GEMMINT to save 10% off of these covers and any other item on the store. And and that code is good for life. It's not just a one-time use. All right, so speaking of Venom, man, we have a lot of King and Black stuff here. Let's start with Planet of the Symbiotes. This is by Chapman, Terry, Villanova, Beirut, White, and Rosenberg. So I, I, I'm a sucker for Planet of the Symbiotes. I loved the arc back in the 90s. This one is really following the Life Foundation symbiotes, Riot, Phage, Agony, bringing back Scream, who's kind of been around ever since Absolute Carnage. She's not possessed because Andy's possessing that hellfire power, but basically showing those symbiotes being nulled out and under the control of Null, and just showing more of the destruction that's going on with Earth being enveloped by this symbiote. Then we have Gwenum vs. Carnage issue one. This one's by Maguire, Flaviano, and Renzi. So this is kind of just what you would expect. It, it's in the world of King and Black. It's not essential to the story, but at least it's taking place during the events, you know? So it's what you would expect. You have um, Ghost Spider, who I haven't even read since she was like Spider Gwen. So she's got some type of spider symbiote type of costume already. It's no surprise that she becomes Gwenom in this issue, but what the surprise is, is who becomes Carnage. So that's pretty interesting. Pretty dope artwork. You know, I'm a sucker for monsters and symbiotes, and that's what all these King of Black tie-ins have. And this is the last official King of Black tie-in, but it's not the last one in these books. So Thunderbolts issue one, great cover here. My only beef with this is that, uh, well, I don't know if it's really with this, it's more with Amazing Spider-Man, but we'll get to that. Anyway, Kingpin's the mayor. He puts together a ragtag group of people to fight the Null threat, and he calls them the Thunderbolts because that's one of the hero team's uh, names that he has copywritten. So who is it here? You have Rhino, uh, Taskmaster, Death, and Star. Uh, it kind of plays out like <laughs> the Suicide Squad movie, like in the streets, fighting like symbiote monsters, amazing scene though uh amazing death scene with one of these big uh symbiote dragons so i thought that was really cool man it was actually pretty exciting how it's picking off these members of the thunderbolt so uh kind of kingpin's attempt to help mankind during this king of black series all right let's go to immortal hulk issue 42 this is with al ewing Linz, gorham stoat bennett jose o'halloran and mount so 
Man, the first page and the last few pages were awesome. It felt like Immortal Hulk, but the whole middle, the whole thick of this book was so boring, man. I, I really was, it was a chore to get through, man. But once you get to like the hellscape area with the leaders torturing Bruce Banner and he's got these things in his eyes and he's trying to figure out how uh, the connection can be broken or, or connected with Earth and with Bruce and all this stuff and his father... So <laughs> with the horror-like uh, art style that we're accustomed to in this series. But that middle part, man, was super slow. All right, let's go to Marauders, issue 17, Jerry Dugan, Lowly and Delgado. So, man, it, it kind of sucks that this used to be one of the stronger titles uh, for the mutant stuff. But the last couple issues haven't been doing it for me. This issue was like, what is even going on here? I, I did like the Callisto Storm battle. Uh, which is more towards the end, and you can see it on the cover. It's kind of like a throwback to their original fight for the leadership of the X-Men. But Storm does it uh, with good intentions to help Kalisto. So I did like that aspect. I mean, I like the artwork, like punching in the heart with the electricity and everything. Super dope. But uh, the Kate Bishop stuff, man, it's kind of falling off for me. And then let's go to Sword Issue 2 by Al Ewing, and he's with Shahiti and Garcia. So... Uh, I didn't like Sword Issue 1, and Issue 2 I did like it because it's what's going on with the X-Men and Krakoa during the King and Black event. So they're kind of overseeing things, zapping symbiote dragons out of the sky, going to Krakoa and seeing that it's full of snow and darkness because the symbiote has enveloped the Earth, and they're here to basically help mankind, right? So you have a Sunspot here cameo here, which was super dope, and he gets like super Nova charged and everything. Uh, so that aspect I did like, and I thought it was like a King of Black tie-in done right. What's happening with the other Marvel Universe while King of Black's going on? With that being said, we're going to skip that and talk about Amazing Spider-Man because it doesn't make sense. So Nick Spencer, Mark Bagley, Dell, and Rosenberg. So basically, it's telling us what happened that we didn't see in the last issue. What happened between Kindred, Norman Osborn, and Spider-Man. Norman tried to do a Hail Mary type of play, threatening Mary Jane's life. Or not threatening, but putting her life in danger to try to break through and get through to Kindred. So uh, it's kind of weird how this is just a flashback to that last issue, but we didn't see it. Anyway, how the heck is Norman Osborn here when in the King of Black storyline in Thunderbolts, he's in Ravencroft? So that's what I'm not really digging, and nothing King of Black is really going on in this run. And how? Nick Spencer is Donny Cade's boy. Darth Vader issue 9. This is by Pac and then so and Menon. Continuing to be a dope-ass run, man. Darth Vader versus these droids. These droids want his parts, like a la Rocket Raccoon. Come to find out his parts are just regular-ass parts and not really worth anything. It has a tight escape scene with Darth Vader. Uh, who did he even take with him? I forget. But, like, going hyperspace in vehicles that shouldn't be going into hyperspace. This uh, series, these issues are always super fast, fun, with great artwork, and they're just entertaining issues. All right, let's move over to the independence. We got Bloodshot issue 10 from Valiant. This is by uh, Tim Seeley, Booth, Andrio, Dalhouse, and Sharp. So always down to support the boys over at Valiant, uh, Bloodshot being one of their flagship titles. This is the beginning of a new arc, and it's cool. You kind of see Bloodshot. He's stranded in this pocket dimension floating rock with white everywhere. There's like millions of miles away from anything. Uh, showing how he gets out of there, and he's teaming up with this kind of European hacker guy. I really like how it's written. It's really witty, and they make fun of it in the book, and it works. Um, the artwork is really good. It kind of reminds me of the scumbag issue, man, and like they show his chest opened up and everything. Pretty graphic, uh, well-drawn, and a fun little issue. All right, moving over to Boom Studios. We got Seven Secrets by Tom Taylor, Danielle D. Niculo. I don't think I'm saying that right. And Walter Biamonte. So at first, I was kind of like, ah, oh, I feel like it's the same thing issue after issue. And then, boom, totally flips the script. Somebody opens one of the secrets. We see what happens. It's something that you could never predict, some kind of mind-blowing star road from mario karts type of stuff happening so you know it got me back excited because in the beginning i'm like this feels like the last three issues but now they're finally going somewhere different with this story and uh i'm i'm excited for it let's stick with boom here so we have mighty morphin issue three by parrot Rena, and biamonte you gotta love this cover man white ranger green ranger uh, I love this series, man. It's really well written. Like when the Blue Ranger comes out the scene and starts kicking and punching and talking, it sounds like the Blue Ranger. Like you can picture it in your head. Uh, Parrot really has these characters down. We're starting to understand how 
this Green Ranger is able to be here and how the the power coin got charged up and able to work. We still don't know really who the Green Ranger is, but we see who's helping him. And uh, we kind of get some Megazord action at the end here to fight one of these big um, putty prime creatures. So uh, pretty cool. Plus a little bit more flashback on Zordon and Zordon uh, finding out who is in charge of the Green Ranger and getting pissed off. So pretty fun issue. All right, from Volt Comics, we have Heavy Issue 4. This is by Max Bemis, Eric Donovan, Chris Peter, and Taylor Esposito. Great issue, great run, uh, really well-drawn and well-colored. I really like the palette they use here, man, like these purples and pinks and neons. And this story, is, it's got everything, man. First of all, it's got violence, it's got nudity, it's got multiversal invasions, interdimensional policing, the afterlife, and the big weight, uh, and an ending that really kind of scratches my itch. Like that's the type of stuff I want to see in comics. So I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but it's probably not a title that a lot of people are reading, man. I suggest you pick up Heavy. I'm really digging it. It's exciting. It's gory. It's violent. It's bloody. And it's interesting. All right, I got two issues that I read digitally. I know you guys were probably like, well, what, where's the pick of the week here? So uh, first on Image, we got Big Girls Issue 6 by Jason Howard. Uh, fun issue, man. I mean, th this is getting kind of to the next level of big girls. We got big boys now, big naked boys with their piece hanging out while they're fighting and uh, pretty interesting stuff. So like the mythos of this story are getting expanded. We could have male characters be big now. We can have the kaiju type of monster characters have thoughts and feelings and, and work with humans and not just be mindless beasts. So I was definitely digging it. I like the art style. And I like how it feels like a kaiju type of movie or show, kind of similar to like Power Rangers, right? In this bigger scope. Uh, so very, uh, very good issue. All right, then my pick of the week from Image Comics. Ha ha, this is by Prince and Del Rey. This was a, a issue I didn't even know was coming out. I just read it on the strength that it was a number one. It's got this creepy clown cover. And it's going to be hard not to compare this to the killing joke, the origin of like this failure of a clown. His wife treats him like shit. He's got kids. He's got bills. He's not making money. And then everything just continues to get worse, right? And it's, it's almost like the origin of the Joker. Like all these bad things keep happening and bad things do happen. But at the end, there's like this twist that really has me interested to see what happens moving forward. I'm not going to spoil what happens to him that makes him see things in a different light, but that's kind of the gist of it. And it was my pick of the week, man. Let me know what your pick of the week was in the comment down below. It'll enter you into a drawing to win our Batman Killing Joke CGC 9.8. How fitting because haha ha and Killing Joke. When we hit 110,000 subscribers, I'll pick a random video where I promoted that giveaway. Use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a worldwide winner. I appreciate you guys watching. Check out my other new comic book day reviews in the playlist to the right. And stay minty fresh. Peace.